Hello and welcome to the People's Stimulus Check and Stimulus Package Update as of November 18th, 2020. Well, today we find out that governors from multiple states, both uh, Republican and Democrat, are putting pressure on the Congress and Senate to pass a stimulus package. They're joining forces to basically make them pass a stimulus package. I wish them luck because they have a lot, a lot of opposition right now um, with Nancy Pelosi as well as Mitch McConnell. And Novo Prize winning ecologist basically says that the longer we wait to pass a stimulus package, the more it's going to cost. He says that the politicians are digging us into a deeper hole with all their inactions. So basically, with all the politicians screwing around and doing nothing, they're digging us into a massively big hole, which is going to cost us more and more to get out of. Nancy Pelosi did get reelected as Speaker of the House, so she is basically now the leader of the Democrats in the House of Representatives. Democratic Car Congresswoman Alyssa Stoken, I think that's her name right, from Michigan says that we need to have a new leadership and Pelosi isn't that leader which I have to agree with her because what has Pelosi basically been doing for us lately but nothing. Then we also have uh, Democratic Congresswoman Abigail Spamberger from Virginia says that the House will lose more seats in the 2020 elections to, to the Republicans since Nancy Pelosi is now the leader of the Democrats. In Georgia, the Henry, the Henry Count is basically going on, but so far they have found 2,500 votes that were not counted. The unofficial results of those votes were 1,643 votes for Trump and 865 votes for Biden. But that really does not make it matter since Biden had actually won that state by over 14,000 votes. Currently, Philadelphia is going back on lockdown on Friday for at, until at least January 1st. And California is putting in place restrictions on 28 of their counties, basically limiting how many people you could have per gathering, as well as outdoor dining areas and outdoor events. And Oregon is also implementing new restrictions taking place today. That's not good because more, more, more restrictions mean that we have more people getting locked down. In fact, I'm actually waiting for that to happen in the state I live in because I live in Utah. Maybe because this, the cases are still getting hit worse here as well. But um, we shall find out what happens. I mean, because if if Joe Biden gets into the presidency, he does plan to implement a six week quarantine for everybody, no exceptions. And he wants to try to pass a big stimulus package that would allow for everyone that gets that's currently employed to not miss any of their wages as well as i believe give a stimulus check out to the people include as well as more ppp money as well as more enhanced unemployment on that topic i do think that enhanced unemployment should actually be limited to people who actually need it and not those who are actually just sponging off the system and i do know a few people that are actually doing that I'm not one of them. I actually do have a part-time job, so I'm good. Let's see here. Mitch McConnell, sorry. <laughs> Pelosi and Schumer basically sent the Republican leader, Mitch McConnell, a letter asking him to join them at the negotiation tables. And nothing's really come back of that yet because he still says that, Mitch McConnell basically still says that uh, Nancy Pelosi is not willing to compromise. So basically, I'm not sure that's anything to happen there. The governor of Colorado is calling an emergency meeting of their, legis their, their state legislator to try to pass a stimulus package for their own residents. And he says why he's doing this is because the federal government is failing to do their job and they have, it has to, they have to take care of their residents the best they can. And I've heard that there's actually a few states out there that are actually doing that for the residents. Not a whole lot because their state funding isn't very limited. Let's see here. They the the basically the um, audit on the voting machines 
is has been concluded, and there has been no sign of foul play as far as the voting machines go. The Secretary of the State of Georgia said that Trump cost himself the election by telling the Republicans not to vote by mail. So basically, Trump screwed himself by telling the Republicans to not go by mail because his exact quote on I think it was September 18th, I believe it was, that was telling the Republicans to not do it by absentee ballot, which is basically a mail-in ballot, and to do it by machine. So he basically cost him a lot of votes. In fact, the Secretary of Georgia did say that if he wouldn't have done that, he could have won Georgia probably by 10,000 votes, putting down Biden. But he cost himself the, the votes, so this Trump's fault in the first place. Pfizer released the results for a vaccine, and it actually shows very promising results. Their current vaccine shows a 95% effectiveness against COVID-19, which is actually really, really good. There are over 100 politicians, both Republican and Democrat, that actually um, disagree with Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell because they say that they are in between the two extremes that they are. Mitch McConnell's extreme being cheap, Nancy Pelosi's being asking for too much. I mean, I don't, I don't think $3.4 trillion right now is actually too much because that actual dig United States has a lot of holes and could save us a lot of time having to worry about passing future bigger stimulus packages later because that's basically what's going to happen according to the, the a Nobel Prize winning ecologist. So that's what he says that the longer we wait, the more it's going to cost and the longer they the way they wait, the more it's going to cost. The Republicans are waiting on the, the Senate results for Georgia that won't be done until January 5th of next year to see who actually wins the Senate, whether it will be Democrat run or if it will be Republican run. In fact, I think that's what Nancy Pelosi is waiting to do as well is to see if she can win the Senate because if the, if the, the Democrats can win the Senate, they'll have a, a full house basically. We still have a Democrat in the presidency a Democratic leader in the Senate, and a Democratic leader in the House, and that will make it easier for the past bigger stimulus. But if the Republicans retain the Senate, it's going to be really, really hard. Let's see here. I lost my place, sorry, here. Pfizer will be uh, basically filing the paperwork on this, basically on Friday, for uh, emergency FDA use of their vaccine because that actually that's not bad. I mean, for them to actually have a 95% effective vaccine, that's actually really good. That actually puts Russia's 92% uh, effectiveness for their vaccine down by 3%. So, sticking it to you, Russia. <laughs> and as of Tuesday, we reported 161,934 new cases of COVID-19 with 1,707 fatalities. And these are all, these are also by John Hopkins University. And as more results come forward, I will be more happy to let you guys know. And until next time, you guys have a wonderful day and an excellent night. And remember, we're all on this together because it's all we have is each other. Because as you know, our politicians are playing games. Even the governors of states think the same thing. So you guys have a wonderful evening and I'll broadcast again to you when I have more information that you will find relevant.